Hey, this is Ricky Kennerly Cichlids. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about five observations I've been making from the Frontosa Cichlid Colony. Five observations. Number one, which is most important, don't jump to conclusions about your Frontosas. I'll elaborate on all five of these through the video. Number two, low flow low turbulence in their frontosa cichlid colony is very important low flow not necessarily less filtration i'll elaborate on all of these number three frontosas take longer to adapt to change we all like to do some changes in the frontosa colonies in all our aquariums it's important to know they take more time to adjust to change. Number four, sumps can be great filtration for your frontosa cichlid colonies. Sumps. Number five, frontosas sometimes need to fast. Now, you may need to fast, and you may know this. Frontosas may not know this. But they do anyways. Let's start on the number one observation that I've taken place on the Frontosa Cicla Colony. Don't jump to conclusions. Now, I've done some major changes recently, at least major changes to me. I added an alpha male, right here is a whopper, added him, took out the previous alpha male, changed the lighting up here to Kessel LEDs, and then those things right there, I thought they were affecting the frontosas somehow. At first, all the frontosas were over here on this side of the aquarium. See where my finger is? And I thought it had to do with the placement of the lights. The lights here. See um, up top? The left and the right lights. The pendant lighting. So I adjusted the light. I, I changed it more stronger in the center and see if it was spread out. I, I adjusted it this way and that way. Then I changed it to one pendant. And it didn't seem to make any difference. They were all over on to the right. Now, Whopper you see is in the big cave. and uh, But he doesn't always stay there. And um, at this time, he was all over there with the front hoses over here. So all the, most of the front toes were right there. So at first I thought I was the line. That's how I jumped to conclusions. So I thought, well, maybe I need to change the flow. So I adjusted the flow down to low as it would go in the aquarium. They still stayed over on the right-hand side. And then I thought, hmm, let's let's look at my other Frontosa aquariums and see what the differences are. There was a little bit of difference in temperature. So I raised the temperature. Now I jumped in conclusions at first that it was the lighting. That was the flow. That was the temperature. But I did not take in consideration that I had moved the alpha male. I had taken out the previous alpha male. I disrupted the territories in the aquarium. I had stressed the fish because of the moves of the fish being brought in and brought out. Now all the things I had done have since you know when I came to that conclusion and jumped to the conclusion might have had some 
effect on the front hoses. The bottom line is is an observation that I, that I will cover for number three. So let's go to number two. I mentioned I mentioned. I mentioned that uh, low flow in the aquarium is beneficial. Now, if you have a big colony of frontosa cichlids, uh, they're going to put out some waste, quite a bit of waste. Some people, they like that waste sucked right up in the filter right away. And this can cause turbulence and then it'll stress your fish. They're not as happy less likely to breed at least it will be a more of a struggle from the breed so low flow in the aquarium is beneficial because in the deeper regions of the Lake Tanganyika there's not as much flow as say a huge you know fluval 700 or whatever the, the big ones are now if you have several big filters on your front toes of calling and the, the water just whipping them around it's not going to be relaxing to the front toes they're not used to that now they may adjust somewhat but you can see that they're more relaxed now all the whites in the front toes here see the whites coming out you see changer right here they look good they're happy they're not as stressed or not as dark so this is what I observe from the front of the colony low flow low turbulence in the, in, the, in the colony is very important number three you heard me talk about all the changes I've made recently Frontoses just take longer to adjust to change. I had moved the previous alpha male out of here and for a while both the new one and the old one were in there together. There was a little bit of a conflict. Nothing no damage was done, but they were trying to decide who was the you know the, the top dog in the aquarium for a day. It stressed out the fish. And I thought once I moved the previous alpha out, they would adjust quickly. They did not. So it's been a few days since then, and you can see dramatic improvement. Now, as far as number four, sumps can be great filters. At first, I was reluctant to believe that. Because I haven't had much use you know use personal use of them at home I would used them at a, a hatchery that I worked at and they worked just you know really well so as far as the maintenance of them the options you have uh, I decided that sumps are beneficial to the front toes of colony because the options the filtration, when you're talking about filtration, the health of your fish, the biological filtration is the most important. So having every little particle sucked out of your aquarium in a massive turbulent filter is not that going to be that important to the health of your fish. It's the biological filtration. Number five, frontosas sometimes need to fast. Now, I talked about the changes I've made. I've changed the flow, I've changed the lighting, I changed two big males. One time, both the alphas were in there. I took one out, one was new. So, it stressed the fish. So I tried to feed the fish a day later. Didn't want to eat. 
We're not hungry. Tried to feed the fish the next day. Didn't want to eat. Weren't hungry. It's so sometimes the franchises need to fast. So if you if you notice that your fish your when you go to the aquarium, I'm going to demonstrate this. So give me a second. Let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you what a good reaction is when you come to the aquarium before you feed them. So a good reaction is, of course, when you're feeding, this aquarium is at my height level. You want to see, I just scared them, you want to see a gathering of the front hoses. where they're moving towards an area where they're wanting to eat. You want them to show the food. And see if they recognize the bag. See how they're kind of all gathering and looking over here? So let's uh, try to put some food in there. See how there's only a few fish going for right now? Now there's more and more and more. You want to put in just a little bit of food to start with. If they're not all going for it, they're not hungry enough to have a lot of food. So if they're not up at the top of the aquarium waiting for you to put food in there, put very little food in there. Or wait another day or two before you add food. And a lot of conclusions would be, hey, it's the food that's not that good. Well, see, they're starting to react like they want more food. So we'll put some more food in there. Let's see how they do. The reason I know that this food's good because all my other franchises really go for it. Now, see, they're a little bit more relaxed. More of them are going for it. Don't put the whole amount for the whole colony in at once. They don't go for it at first. Skip a feeding. Skip a day. Skip two days. Maybe even three. And you see Whopper. He's, not, he's smelling the food. Sensory organs are picking up the food. So I'll put a little bit more in there. Don't put all the food in there at once. Let me step away from the aquarium so it'll be a little bit more relaxed and let you watch them eat it. Now, there's only so many of them that are eating. So if they're not hungry enough to go up there and compete with the few that are eating, they can wait another day before they get fed. Because when a fish is hungry, they're going to go up there and get the food. So if you put to, uh, the amount of food for the Frontosa colony all at once, and you don't know if they're going to eat it, you can have a lot of waste in the aquarium that you either will have to siphon out, or it's going to add to your ammonia nitrite and nitrate cycle. So feed a little bit at a time and, and, and find out whether you want to fast the front hoses or not. Fasting is good. Allow your cycles to catch up. Uh, sometimes your front hoses are stressed. So they need some time to not eat. So fasting is good. Knowing how much to put food to put in the aquarium is important. Skipping a day is not bad. It is good. Fasting cleans out the system. Other front hoses. And makes them happier. Now you see they're looking for it. 
but they didn't go for it at first so I'm not gonna feed any more today I'm gonna wait till tomorrow so they'll realize if they want food they need to come out there at the same time to get it they need to be the aggressive eaters if they're not real aggressive you need to hold off on the food I hope you learned something from these observations some you may agree with, some you may not, but it is my opinion, and I learn from a lot of other people's opinions, and I hope you learn from mine. This has been Ricky Kennerly Cichlids. Look around the screen and pick another video to watch from Ricky Kennerly Cichlids. Thanks for watching.